All right, in this video, we're gonna be removing air conditioner hum. And you can actually see it right here, but let's go ahead and listen. Try to get a baseline reading where you just have essentially silence except the noise. That way you can make a profile of it and help RX remove it if necessary. Inside of this clip, I'm actually talking about what you should always do as a sound guy on a film or in your studio is always record the noise floor. You never know when you're going to need it. Uh, you need it for a couple of different reasons. You can need it to match different microphones for different takes. You can use it to get a sound profile inside of RX to remove noise. There are a bunch of reasons why it's a good idea. So whenever you're on set or you're in the studio, just say, everybody be quiet, let's record some noise. You know what I mean? Just do it so you have it. And you can actually see it here. This is what the noise looks like, and this is from the air conditioner inside of my studio. Other than that, it's pretty silent in here. I've got really good sound dampening in here, so there's no reverb, there's no delay or anything like that. It's really uh, a really good room, but you can actually see inside of the waveform, as I said, the blue here is where the hum is. You can actually see some of the harmonics of the hum. Uh, and down here where it's super bright and just a dark line, that's really low noise that we need to get rid of if we want a nice sound. So there are a number of different ways we can tackle this. We can use the D-hum, for example, but it, I, I found the best way, but let's go ahead and check out D-hum just for beginning. So I've got adapted mode on. Let's go ahead and run it and see what happens. So look, we did get a fair amount of reduction here. You can still hear it or see it. You can still see the harmonics here as well. And uh, we did get rid of that top line down there, but there's still that bottom line. And it's easy enough to get rid of that if you come into an EQ. You just got your high, uh, low cut down here. Go ahead and hit that. And boom, that's gone now. So now this is a pretty good sound. Let's listen to it. Baseline reading, where you just have essentially silence except the noise. And this is where we were. Just have essentially silence except the noise. So not only did we get rid of the hum, but we actually degraded the dialogue itself. And that's not a good look. That's not what we're trying to do as, you know, someone who's replacing or fixing audio. So I'm going to go back to the initial state and I'm going to show you how I would attack this. The first thing I would do is go ahead and run voice denoise, just because I want to get rid of all other noise so we can actually focus on the hum. And you'll be surprised at the voice denoise, how well it does at actually removing most of the hum as well. So let's go ahead and run that. Adapted mode is fine. Hit render. And look at that. So you can see visually that it's gotten it's done a really good job so but let's listen to the dialogue and see how it was affected try to get a baseline reading where you just have essentially silence except the noise that way you can make oh yeah this is a much better take than before when we ran the d hum so what I would do next is run the EQ. And to choose this cutoff, I actually use a spectrum analyzer, and I think I did this in another video for this course, to find out where the lowest point of my you know natural speaking voice is to make sure I'm not carving anything out of it. I still like a bassy voice. My voice is naturally kind of bassy, and we don't want to hollow it out. We want it to be as natural as possible while getting rid of any issues in that lower frequency range. So let's go ahead and run render. You can see that we got rid of that. We can still see these bands down here, the harmonics of the actual hum there, but let's listen to the voice. Try to get a baseline reading where you just have essentially silence except the noise. So it is carving a little bit out of my voice, but I think we're still in the clear. I don't think it's very, um, it's negatively affected. Essentially silence except the noise. So the next thing I want to do is try de-hum again, because I can see the humming. I can see the harmonics. Let's see what it does. Come into de-hum again. And this isn't a stereotypical mic hum, so it might not do a great job. I'm going to leave it on adaptive and hit render. And it's gotten rid of that lower content, but let's see what the voice sounds like. Try to get a baseline reading where you just have essentially silence except the noise. Baseline reading where you just have reading where you just have essentially silence
Yeah, so it's still getting rid of too much. So what I want to do is leave it on the EQ in terms of my history over here. So I'm going to undo the dehum, but but keep everything up to that point. And what I want to come into here is spectral denoise. And there's a preset inside of here called reduce tonal noise or hum. That's what I want. And for this particular one, we can use adaptive and we can also take a profile. And this is what I was talking about before. So what I would do is record this or select this part and hit learn. And it's gonna listen to that. And I'm telling it, there is no voice here. This is just the noise that I wanna get rid of. And then I would unclick out of there and then hit render. And look at that. You can see that those harmonics have gone away. The noise. Reading where you just have essentially silence except the noise. Okay, so I have degraded the dialogue here, but there's no way around that. That's always gonna happen unless you come in and just select these parts here. So you can get a little more surgical, but I would say that this is acceptable. The voice isn't such a low quality that it's distracting. It still sounds fairly natural. And we've gotten rid of the air conditioner hum completely. I mean, you can't hear it now. There is still this lower one and we could get in with a filter later on to remove it if we needed to, but I don't think it's audible. I think this is below the frequency range where it's audible. You can hear it in the background when possible, if at all possible, when you're recording. So that's where we are. This is where we were. If at all possible, when you're recording and you know there's going to be background noise that you need to remove, try to get a baseline reading where you just have Oh, that sounds so much better. Let's actually go back to the EQ, turn it on adaptive, because if we look here, if we take our selection tool and just, uh, let's come in and just select this part right here. I believe that the humming frequency actually changes a little bit over time. So maybe adaptive might be better here rather than taking the profile, but try out both and see which one works best. So that's not doing as good a job. What I would do is come in and redo the learn function here. I would learn it, reduce uh, only tonal and hum, boom, click out. So we render the whole thing using that profile. Everything looks much cleaner. Everything sounds much better. And I think we've done a really great job of getting rid of that air conditioner hum. And now I can work in my studio with the air conditioner on and not have to worry about it you know, ruining my audio take because I have RX and I can actually automate that process in the future. So anyway, that's how to remove the air conditioner from any setting. I hope you learned something along the way. Let's move on to the next video.